Good morning. This is Ramblings of an Invisible Mind podcast for Friday, December 2nd, 2016. So my apologies to uh, the few people that uh, peruse us via video. Um, obviously the video you're watching doesn't have my face, uh, which might be a blessing actually, but yeah, I got going a little bit too early. I mean, basically, it's 7.08 right now. And if I am not hitting the road, if I'm not on the road like at 7.25 or so, uh, it's just too dark to shoot video. And it's too dark coming home right now. So my window is really tiny. And I've actually got to get to work early today. Um because I got an 8 o'clock meeting, so I I left a little early. I just stopped and got me some Big B coffee, so I got that. So, yeah, it's still a a bit dark right now. So, I've been thinking about my Xbox lately for a couple reasons. Uh, First of all is yesterday I ordered Fallout New Vegas, and it's coming tomorrow. I really wish I'd ordered it so that it was going to be here today. <laughs> but it's coming tomorrow. And I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to playing that. I've watched you know, Fallout 3. And I actually started to watch the beginning of a, of a walkthrough of Fallout New Vegas. And, and then I stopped because I thought, you know, this game I can play. Fallout 3, it was just like, eh, I don't know. I, I watched a, play, a walkthrough of it, and, and kind of by the time I thought, well, I could get this because it's available on the 360, on the Xbox 360. But then I was like, well, I was kind of halfway through the main storyline on the walkthrough, and I thought, well, I'll just finish this, and I won't bother playing that game. But I decided I decided that, you know, playing New Vegas would be would be fun and something that I could, I could do, so I, I stopped watching that. So I, I don't know a ton about... Uh, the gameplay in New Vegas, which is cool. Uh, I am actually right now watching a walkthrough of Fallout 4 because I figure it'll be... Um, I don't know that I'll ever get a chance to play that, or at least it'll be a long time because I don't have any any um, uh, plans to get an Xbox One anytime soon. So yeah, I am very much looking forward to that. And I've been having a hankering to play... Assassin's Creed again. So I've got the first, I think it's the first Assassin's Creed. It's it's going on at about the time of the Crusades. I'm not quite sure which Crusade, but the Templars are all over the place. And it's, it's taking place in the Middle East. And I'm actually in Jerusalem. And I, I was stuck. There's you, you, you unlock the city in sections. And so I'm in the initial section of the city. And there's this guy I have to assassinate, but he kind of traps me in this warehouse, and i got to fight all these guards. And I I could never get past fighting all these guards. But I thought, well, you know, maybe if I I do this, try it again, maybe I'll I'll do a little better. So I I got playing the game, and I actually just did some, picked some fights with, there's these guards all over the city that just want to, are, are just hair trigger and and you know so if they see you coming they're gonna fight you so I I, I got into a few fights with them and, and it was actually doing pretty well I was I was you know fighting and killing groups of of guards and I thought, oh okay great so then I went and did the <clears throat> got got back to this this warehouse again to try the hit try the assassination and and I did much better. I actually I actually killed all these guards. I think at least three times. You know, I, I still haven't gotten past it. But the problem now at this point isn't that I, I can't always get past the guards. The problem is this guy goes running, and he he I chase him across the rooftops, and then he's running through the city. And the problem is is you know, these guards that are everywhere have such a hair trigger for somebody who shouldn't be there doing anything unusual makes you stand out and they instantly become suspicious so running through the city is enough to get a bunch of these guys chasing you and so 
I, I actually got to the point where I'm chasing him like three or four times and like there was one time I actually dentally turned around, took around turn, I was in this little uh, little kind of alcove or whatever and, and I couldn't really get out because I had all these, suddenly all these guards that were right on my heel are, are you know, right there and they're attacking me. So I had to try to fight my way through them. Um, there was another time where I just took a wrong turn and I, and I lost my, my, my quarry, uh, my target, and he escaped and so the mission failed. So I was just like, all right, well, you know, it's just like, you got to try again sometime. And, and then, um, what else happened? There was one time where I got into a fight with a bunch of, a bunch of guards and I didn't realize it, but one of the people that was kind of in this group was my target. Um, I killed all the guards and I was fighting this guy, you know, sword fighting. And just before he killed me, because my health was a little low at that point, I know when you're, when, when you're, when you're fighting your target or, and he's close to death or when you've actually killed him, it's like the whole world fuzzes out. It's just, it's just you and him you get kind of this intimate little moment for a second there, for a little bit there, um, as he's dying or whatnot. And, and so all the, all the other graphics on the screen kind of, kind of, you know, disappear and you just got this little, this little personal moment between you, uh, I really hope there weren't any nails in that wood, between you and your, 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 your victim, which is kind of cool. It's kind of a neat little aesthetic. So it, it wasn't until like he killed me that just before he killed me that I realized that, that we had this kind of everything else had kind of grayed out. And it was just him and I, and that this was the guy. But he ended up killing me instead of the other way around. So I got to get back in there. I think I was inspired because I've been seeing the ads for the movie for Assassin's Creed, and I think I'm going to go see that in the theaters. I'm not sure when it's out. I need to look. I think it's next weekend. But I'm looking forward to that. It looks cool, and it's kind of got me in the Assassin's Creed kind of kind of mode of thinking. Um, uh, you know, one of the reasons I, I'm looking forward to Fallout uh, New Vegas is, is because that's another sandbox world. And, you know, like the uh, Elder Scrolls, or like I've done Morrowind, I've done Oblivion. I haven't done Skyrim yet. That's probably on my list to do someday. Um, you know, the thing I like about, about the sandbox world is that if something's too tough for you, you can go do something else. There's plenty of other stuff to explore, plenty of other side missions. Um, yeah, I, 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 you know, I, I quickly discovered this in when I was playing Morrowind. You had all these caves and tombs to uh, to explore, and there was always something there, some sort of either you know there were there were like raiders there, or there were um, you know rogue rogue magicians or vampires or just, you know, ghosts and skeletons. It varied, you know. But there was always something there that was going to be hostile to you. And the, the level of difficulty varied. And, and, I, and I learned very quickly to, to save my game before I, before I went in. Because, like, there was this one time I went into one of these things and immediately... There was somebody, you know, standing there, you know, ready to greet you and immediately cast a spell. And I was like dead in, in seconds. But what was cool is, you know, I ended up right back outside the door. And so I was like, already then, I will walk away from that one because I'm obviously not high enough to take that one on yet. So there's always, even if there's like some part of the main quest or whatever that you're not able to take on at that time, you know, there's, there's plenty of other other side quests and stuff that you can you can go do you can go exploring and there's all sorts of things so you're not you know so like in Assassin's Creed yeah I can kind of roam the city and there's some small stuff like save a citizen and I can just pick fights with these guards and I can do I can you know I can go exploring and, and there's these flags that you can find I can do those but I can't really move any further with the game I'm not really accomplishing much I'm just kind of like playing around in this little quadrant of the city that's available to me and then, like with the Tomb Raider game, where I'm kind of stopped at this one point, I can't, I can't get beyond that. I'm in, I'm in the middle of a battle, 
Uh, I've got to I've got to fight my way past that, and even that is usually a fairly linear game, where you don't have as much ability to just say, you know what, I'm not going to do the main quest right now. I'm going to go do side stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back into a sandbox style game. That's probably my favorite, really, you know, first person sandbox uh, where you can do anything you want. So I'm, I am looking forward to diving into that, into New Vegas, and, and exploring and seeing all the things there are to see. And, and watching the Fallout 4 videos, I've kind of been reminding myself, because it's been a while since I watched Fallout 3, that, oh yeah, i got to worry about rad roaches, and i got to worry about uh, mole rats, and i got to worry about super mutants. And I'm already going to tell I'm not looking forward to feral ghouls. i got this thing called feral ghouls. You've got ghouls in Fallout, and those are people that you know basically look like zombies, and they become zombies. And you've got two types of ghouls, basically. Uh, you've got uh, ghouls that are just people that are afflicted uh, with this, and they're basically undead and immortal, but they they have their full wits about them. Um, they aren't trying to kill people they're just trying to to live in the world and then you've got what are called feral ghouls which are like your typical zombies you know actually fast zombies um and you know th those things can be kind of intense sometimes and, and i dislike zombies intensely so that's probably gonna be my least favorite aspect of the game is when i come across a pack of feral ghouls there was in, in Fallout 3, there was a, a mission that the guy whose walkthrough I was doing, he helped some, some of the non-feral ghouls, and they gave him a mask that would uh, make him look like a ghoul, even to the feral ghouls. And um, so he could wear that, and then you know they wouldn't bother him. And... That would be really cool if it existed in New Vegas. So if I, I get a chance to help some ghouls out, I'll have to have to do it and, and see if maybe that might be my reward because that would be that would be awesome. But uh, yeah, that's I guess all I got for today. I will be back tomorrow. I think I'm not sure if I have any feedback. I haven't seen any. I don't think, but I might have some. I need to get better on on. I've just been kind of looking at comments on the website, and I get some things on Google and, and, and whatnot that I need to be better at, at looking at all the different places where I might have feedback. So I might have some stuff out there. I will have to go look. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm planning on doing an episode tomorrow. Don't have much going on on, on a Saturday. So uh, I will be talking to you then. So be seeing you.